defining being in the information age. There are people in this lifetime who will be the first people who will have muscular dystrophy uh, sufferers who will have, who will basically be part robot. That will happen in their lifetime. And at the same time, we have people who are communicating from their brains through computer directly. So in a, in a space where security is always running from behind, we're always running from behind. The, the black hat finds a vulnerability. The white hat runs to um, defeat it. Uh, some new application is, is deployed. Uh, the security runs to try to uh, do what it can to mitigate risk that's created by that application. Security is always behind. By the, but if we can somehow redefine what we understand security to be, like we're redefining like re identities being redefined, consciousness is being redefined, being is being redefined. Security professionals and technologists need to ask themselves, how do we need to redefine what security is? Has it got to be a different concept than keeping things out, keeping things in, drawing lines, padlocks? How many padlocks have you seen in how many security advertisements, some of the marketing campaigns? A padlock has about as much to do with cybersecurity in the 21st century as, I don't know, a dead fish, a rock, maybe less. So here's a concept from the world of the, the Tao, the, the wisdom of insecurity. Maybe, maybe the way to real security is to understand that, that there is no such thing as absolute security and deal with our security challenges from a place that's more fluid and more moving. And then an, uh, just a thought from the world of physics and, and, and biology. They're looking in quantum physics. We know from the experiment that uh, the beam going through uh, the, the holes in the piece of cardboard and the choices that are made uh, and how perception changes what you experience, how perception changes what happens. And biologists are looking at this in the same way. Now, I'm speaking purely metaphorically here, but what does that tell us about how we look at security? Not from technology, but from inside the, the human psyche. What role does the human psyche have in, in creating a new model of security? So I talk about having a beginner's mind and, and kind of starting fresh with some of these things rather than, uh, I'll leave you with this thought. So. Uh, I had a, f a friend, Marcus Renum, he was one of the fathers of the firewall. And in the 1990s, he said to me, you know, network security is like trying to change the hull of a ship while you're at sea. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, that was true. It was true then. Now, at this point in time, that was before wireless. At this point in time, you might as well just say, there is, give a Zen answer. There is no ship, there is no sea. You have to find a whole new way of looking at this problem because you cannot change the whole of a ship at sea. So uh, it's, this is really a talk of open questions rather than, um, rather than uh, answers. And I'd be very suspicious of answers because things are moving too fast. It's about an attitude, an approach, a great attitude towards our work, kind of different. So, I will end it there. Three minutes over. I hope that's okay. Questions or comments? Yes. Sir. You didn't mention the mother of all risks, the loss of credibility of world reserve currency. And that's going to affect everything, all these relationships. And uh, how, how do you look at that one? Uh, uh, say it for me again. The how do you look at the risk of credibility of losing the world reserve currency. Yes. That means there is nothing, the common thread is going to be gone. So yes. everything is holding everything together is that. Yeah, I, I've, uh, I have no argument with that. It's a major, it's, the, the, the whole, um, you could go on a whole other, we could go on a whole other tangent about uh, the, the, the economic implications and issues and even the cyber dimensions of that problem and undermining the credibility. I mean, they've done a good job of undermining it themselves, but if somebody was creative about it, willful about it, it could be interesting, but you bring up a very big point. And so what, how do you say project 
how long it takes because we are just at the beginning of it. Yeah. Say within how many years? Or some people may say how many months. When you look at the risk. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to venture a guess on that. Hopefully, we won't have to find out. Something else? Yeah, you just talked about redefining security, right? And there was like this saying, like, let the water flow. The yes. water should not stagnate. Yeah. So you also mentioned that uh, security is there is no nothing like absolute security. Right. So. Uh, so I was like kind of curious how to re redefine security. Is that something like security is never, it's never a destination, it's always a process. That's how we redefine it or well, how, that, do you, how do you refine, redefine it? Like right, that would, be, that would be certainly an important, uh, uh, that, that would be certainly an, a, an important uh, message, what you just said, that it's a process, not, a, not a, an end state, if you were. But, and that'll, that will always be true. Um, and in, when I say redefining, I'm, I, I also suggest to not be so urgent about getting a set definition, you know, but like look at it in a different way, like you say, as a process. And but I'll give you two examples. Uh, there are people working on research uh, about how to, with an insecure environment, with an insecure network, how do you create pockets of security, you know? Temporary movable pockets of security within uh, within a context that's always changing and that you can't uh, that you can't uh, that you can't um, s certify the tr the trustworthiness of. That's one. That's on a technological side. That's one thing. That it maybe if you can't secure your whole network because your whole network's connected to everything else in the world and you don't want it bit to be otherwise because that's the way business flows and culture flows now. But you want to be able to say. For this hour, or for this day, or for this project, I want to create a higher, a different level of, and how do I do that within an open and insecure environment? That's that's a technological point one. On another side, is the the in the, the human factor. What if security? What if security were about how if every? What does Twitter do? Twitter makes you know the NFL says, oh, you can't to its players, you can't talk to the press. Maybe you heard this today on ESPN. But the, 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 you can't talk to the press on this day or this day, before the game, after whatever. But, I, okay, so I, don't, I didn't talk to the press, coach. Nobody Twittered, right? And so all the press and anybody else has to do is read his Twitters. So that's new media. New media changes everything. So, and, and there are various other ways in which social networking applications are changing the way that we communicate and will eventually change the way in which we do business and everything else. Maybe it'll change the way in which we do security. By that I mean not so much the applications, but the mindset of empowering the individual. Twitter, Facebook, all these things empower the individual, right? But what if we can empower the individual to make risk analysis, personal risk analysis, a part of their, the way they approach? You know, like you make diet, what, what I do with my diet is a a choice that I make. What I do with, but and, and, and the more informed you get, the healthier you are. Likewise with this. What if security were something that wasn't about fear and exclusion and control, but about this is you know security is really about love. You want to protect the things you love. Maybe it's your money. Maybe you love your money. You want to protect that. Whatever it is. Maybe you want to protect your children. Whatever it is, you want to protect it. That's really the motive, the deepest motivation of security. You can change that mindset in people. You have a different kind of user, a different kind of software designer. Just two ideas. Anything else? You've been very patient and very kind. You could have thrown your chairs at me or walked out at least 15, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you.